On the latest episode of Farmer Wants a Wife, the 1970s are back, and so are the 1950s. Can you tell me your timeline of when you would like to settle down and have children? How soon do you feel like you guys are ready to have kids? I hear you are a great cook. So what do you cook, Miss Sydney? Ooh, I'm not like an amazing chef. I'm Lizzie Frizzle. This is the Recap Corner. Let's talk about some TV. It hits a little different when mom and daddy's here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Season 2, Episode 9 is called Farmer's Family Dinner. But before the eponymous suppers can be eaten, first the cast has to finish their dinners from last episode. We pick up mid-meal time on the farms. Neither Brandon nor Mitchell have announced if anyone is getting eliminated, but they have both ominously asked one of their contestants to talk privately. On that note, I'm gonna ask Joy to go out and have a little chat. I'll grab your plates. No, I'm gonna go get it. Will you come help me with the dessert? In Tennessee, Mitchell tells Natalie that he liked her when they met, but he's just not that into her anymore. But, you know, nicer. Natalie agrees that the sparks fizzled and volunteers to go home. How you feel? I'm kind of right there with you. Okay. I mean, I feel like I should go home. Through the magic of editing, she appears to have said the exact opposite to camera moments earlier. I like Mitchell and I'm here to see where it takes me. But the interview was clearly shot during the camping trip nearly a week prior. In Colorado, when Brandon questions Joy about their terrible solo date, she explains that her worldview was shaped by an epilepsy diagnosis when she was 12. I used to have seizures in my sleep quite often. It was like the worst pain you could ever feel like in your life. When I turned um, 25, I could finally like afford the health care that I needed. I just feel like I've been put through it. So like whenever somebody's like, oh, I have a cold or I have a cough or, you know, that's how I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> get over <laughs> it. You but when Joy acted callously on their date, it was after Brandon shared that he felt sad when his parents got divorced. He wasn't complaining about a cough. Dad didn't really want the divorce. No. You know, Dad wanted to make it work and stay together and be a family. And Mom just felt like she wanted to do something else. And what about Joy's equally emotionally unavailable sister? What do you think about all that? said a lot of mm-hmm. I mean, is it concerning to you to hear my... No, no, I just feel like I'm so immune to everything. Like, me and my sister both, we don't feel anything. Regardless, because Joy shared her history with epilepsy, Brandon doesn't eliminate her. And her position as his frontrunner is seemingly re-solidified, continuing the uncomfortable dating show tradition of transactional trauma dumping. I feel like if I didn't open up to Brandon, he would have sent me home. He said he wanted us to be a little bit more vulnerable with him, and that's what I gave him tonight. As Brandon narrowly avoids dropping down to just two contestants, again. The next morning in Missouri, Ty isn't as lucky. Ashley's been up all night thinking, like Kristen was last episode. And just like Kristen, the conclusion Ashley comes to is that she's gotta quit the show. She stuck around just long enough to see the woman who was rude to her get eliminated first. Ashley confesses to Ty that she'll be fired if she doesn't show up to work tomorrow. Very convenient timing since she was about to have to clean her first horse stall. She explains that if she were already Ty's winner, then she'd stay in Missouri. But as one of three contestants, she can't risk losing her job back home in Kentucky. She also says she feels bad being away from patients while they undergo chemo. But mostly it seems like she ran out of PTO. I have a lot of questions about Ashley's exit. A lot. Here they are.
In one farm swoop, we lost two-thirds of the contestants who just joined the cast two episodes ago, Mackenzie excluded. Both Natalie and Ashley seemed surprised by their farmer's pre-existing connections with the other women. The other women before I got here, they had experiences that I had no clue about. He may have a stronger connection with one of them than me at this point, and I'm not really sure. I see that he has connections with other girls. If you stand up here, it's okay. easier right here. And it's definitely hard for me. I guess it makes sense that if you're invited to join a dating show halfway through, you might assume the lead doesn't like any of their current contestants. But at the same time, it's bold to join a dating show halfway through and expect the lead to not have bonded with anyone already. Ultimately, I'm not sure what this twist added to the season other than more episodes, tension between farmers and contestants that didn't exist before, and Emerson. It definitely took away momentum, though. The entire cast travels to St. Louis for the season's final mixer, a farm-to-table feast featuring all the farmers' families that only the farmers and their families know about. The women have no idea what to expect. Is this the worst show to be a contestant on? You have to live in a stranger's house with other strangers for weeks. You have to do manual labor while you're there. You have to put up with bad twists designed to make you mad. And you have to wait in a room with a bunch of mismatched accent pieces until you get blindsided with meeting your boyfriend's parents. At least someone told them to dress up. While the women wait, Jennifer Nettles warms up the crowd, consisting of Mitchell's parents and friend, Brandon's parents and friend, Ty's daughter and friend, and Nathan's mom and sisters. The farmers describe each of their contestants to their families via general forgettable niceties. Honestly, this part of the episode was pretty boring, and it would have been really boring were it not for Jennifer Nettles and Brandon's dad. Hi, Jennifer. My pleasure to meet you. I mean, this is so fun. <laughs> Couldn't deny it even no, if you wanted to. Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mark. Maybe this segment would have been more interesting if the stakes at the mixer felt real at all. And I know very little is real about dating shows or reality TV in general, but it's hard to invest when Jennifer Nettles explains that the purpose of a dinner is to help the farmers decide who they should marry in the same episode that Kate describes her relationship with Mitchell like this. We haven't formed that deep of a connection yet. And she's been here the whole time. She's not even one of the new ones who are meeting the parents after only knowing the son for a couple weeks. Still, everyone's excited to get to know one another when the contestants join the party for dinner. Hey, potatoes, everybody get the main dish. Those potatoes. Okay, hey, you know he hasn't fed us a potato yet? At Brandon's table, Grace makes a good impression. I love Grace's sense of humor. She's, she was really cool. While Emerson catches a case of the Rebas. There's no makeup stores nearby. <laughs> no There's no hair salon. <laughs> Where do I get my nails done? <laughs> I'm not a materialistic person, so it's like, no offense, Joy. Shopping malls, I don't care, nails, I don't really care. Like, that's just kind of my stance on it. When Joy leaves the table, Brandon follows to check in. Hi, you came to visit me? Yes, I that's did. That's so sweet. His friend Carlos realizes that even though Joy is the least farm compatible, Brandon likes her the most. At Ty's table, with only two contestants left, one a self-described crazy horse girl, and the other a lifelong New Yorker who didn't know what a silo was a month ago, it's obvious who's a better fit for the farm. So which one of you do you feel is better suited for farm life? Megan is. <laughs> Feeling the pressure, and that Ty's best friend Micah likes Megan more, Melody pulls him for a private talk. So what do you think? Mike is amazing. Who's her favorite? I don't know. I haven't got, I haven't got a chance to talk to her. Who's your favorite? Can't tell you that. Oh. <laughs> I feel like it's normal almost. Yeah. Like spending time in Sykeson is normal for me, which kind of sounds weird because I've never done it before. Yeah. I'm like, you know, Megan, who's completely familiar with that mm -hmm. whole world. I'm not. In the prior scene, Melody revealed that she grew up competitively figure skating around the country and described herself as competitive still, which kind of gives new context to this scene. Meanwhile, at Nathan's table. Yeah, I definitely have baby fever a little bit. I've always felt very calm to be a wife and a mom. I do want to be like a younger mom, obviously. Mm -hmm. Let's ask Nathan, what's your timeline? Uh, as soon as I can. Yeah. For some strange, unexplained reason, Mitchell's parents split up his contestants for separate conversations. His dad pulls just Kiana to ask if she's truly willing to move to Tennessee. She is. 
Elsewhere, Mitchell's mom questions Kate and Sydney about when they want to give birth. Is that something you see around the corner or is that something you see in three to five years? I think, let's say I was in a relationship with my person for a few years and then I would love to travel with that person for a little bit. For me, it would be tomorrow if I met the right person. Oh, That's wow. how I've, I've always pictured myself being like a young mom. Can I tell you who my favorite is? Who? Kate. Later, the women leave so the farmers can hear their family's feedback and get advice about who to take on their final solo dates. In an attempt to create suspense, every farmer's family gives conveniently conflicting advice about who to invite. Mitchell's group is split between all three of his contestants. His mom likes that Kate wants babies yesterday. His dad likes Kiana for being least attached to her current address. And his friend Houston likes Sydney for being the most like Mitchell. Nathan's strongest connection is with Taylor, so his mom suggests giving Allie the date, but his sister says Mackenzie. Brandon's family debates between Emerson and Joy for the same reason, and Ty's daughter Lennon can't choose between Melody and Megan, even though she had no problem doing it before. I'm really not trying to choose favorites, but I love Megan. At the end of the episode, each farmer invites someone on their final solo date. And we see everyone's picks. No cliffhanger. Nathan invites Allie because his mom told him to. Ty invites Melody because her first solo date was a long time ago. Would you like to go on one on one date? I accept. <laughs> Brandon invites Joy because her first solo date nearly derailed their entire relationship and he wants to try again. And Mitchell invites Kiana because he's the most unsure about their connection, making Kate unsure of her own connection with him by not getting picked. Will Kate quit the show? Will Melody triple axle into Ty's heart? Will Allie get out of the friend zone or into an SUV after getting eliminated? We don't know yet. To find out, come back next week for another Farmer Wants a Wife recap. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, if you're so inclined, please like and subscribe. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye.